Last week, while I was meeting with constituents in Iowa, news broke here in Washington, D.C. about Assistant Special Agent in Charge Tim Tebow's retirement. Since May 31 of this year, I've highlighted Tim Tebow's partisan bias and how it infected major FBI investigations. That included a July 18th letter of this year that highlighted his role in opening a criminal investigation into Trump's campaign and advisors. That investigation is the electoral investigation that's been in the news. For example, on July 26th of this year, the Washington Post reported on that very same Trump investigation. Now, however, the Post failed to note that Tebow was a prime mover in opening it. Now get this, the Post failed to note that Tim Tebow predicated the investigation in a substantial part on liberal news articles as well as information derived from a liberal nonprofit. Then Attorney General Garland and Director Ray approved a full investigation anyway, which, as we all know, was contrary to standard procedure for moving ahead on an investigation. That Washington Post article occurred one day after I made the Trump investigation letter public, and one day after I made the July 25th Hunter Biden investigation letter public. Since Tim Tebow's exit from the FBI, I've noticed more news articles and reporting that hasn't been accurate with respect to the allegations that I've made public. Let me take this opportunity then to correct the record with respect to that inaccurate reporting. Some reports have noted that the Hunter Biden criminal probe is ongoing. Therefore, how can the allegations of Tebow shutting down investigation activity related to Hunter Biden be a credible? Well, this is the difference. The whistleblower disclosures to me relate to investigative activity and avenues of information that originated entirely separate from the ongoing Hunter Biden criminal probe. That's why the allegations that I made that I brought forward are so very, very important because we're dealing with a separate category of potentially criminal information relating to Hunter Biden that the FBI has within its possession. And the information received by the FBI was either verified or verifiable. Even so, based on allegations the investigative activity was shut down by Special Agent Tebow and, of course, by others based on the false assertion that it was disinformation. How many times do we have this disinformation coming up as an excuse all the time with Grassley's investigations? Now, to be precise, FBI officials wanted to take action with respect to this separate investigative information that the FBI had in its possession related to Hunter Biden. However, 
Tebow blocked the FBI from doing what would normally be done. Accordingly, the investigative activity and information cannot be advanced as it should have been, which means the FBI could have gathered more evidence with respect to Hunter Biden, but cut bait instead. And the FBI and Tebow cut bait right before the 2020 presidential election. Since the information and activity was shut down, it wouldn't have been initially shared with any ongoing criminal code. That calls into question then what U.S. Attorney Weiss is actually investigating. It also calls into question what the FBI's Baltimore field office is reviewing and whether it's the full scope of evidence. Now, I've asked Director Ray about that whole uh, issue. I ask him, quote, how can verified and verifiable information relating to Hunter Biden, potentials, criminality, be shared with U.S. Attorney Weiss if it is shut down? End of my quote. We have no answer from Director Ray. At the Judiciary's Committee August 4th oversight hearing, Director Ray said that it's his expectation that such information would be shared with relative offices. So, Director Ray, I have this question. What have you done to ensure that your expectation has been met? Because Director Ray's failure to answer, Congress is unaware of whether or not the FBI has finally shared full and complete information and investigative activity with any ongoing criminal probe. Therefore, without additional transparency from the government, there's a very real chance the Hunter Biden criminal probe doesn't include the full evidentiary picture. Now, how can the American people trust the results? Some have also questioned how an assistant special agent in charge like Tebow can have so much power, power to open and close investigative activities. Well, that's exactly what he did. And that power is often abused within the FBI. For example, on March 28th of this year, Chairman Durbin and I wrote a letter to the FBI about an audit. That audit showed widespread violation of internal policies designed to ensure proper handling of the FBI's most sensitive investigations. To, to read from my letter with Chairman Durbin, quote, the FBI reviewed 353 sensitive investigative matters, just under half of all such matters that were pending during the, this 18-month review period, and identified 747 violations, end of quote. In 45 investigations, the FBI didn't conduct or document a legal review prior to opening it. In 40 investigations, the FBI officials who opened a sensitive investigative matter didn't obtain approval from the relevant special agent in charge or even the assistant special agent in charge. Now, with those statistics, I fear that's just the tip of the iceberg. In conclusion, 
Let's look at Thibault's recent statement and the allegations he didn't address. I think we have five or six. First, he didn't address his role in opening a Trump investigation based on liberal news articles and information derived from a liberal nonprofit. Secondly, he didn't address his collaboration with Richard Pilger with respect to that investigation. Third, he didn't address efforts to water down the Trump investigation memos sent to Attorney General Garland and Director Ray, which they ultimately approved. Fourth, he didn't address the shutting down of the investigative activity and avenues of information relating to Hunter Biden. Fifth, he didn't address the alleged criminality within the information provided to the FBI about Hunter Biden. Six, he didn't address the August 2020 assessment opened by Brian Oten that was used to falsely label Hunter Biden's information as disinformation. Seventh, he didn't address his actions to try and improperly mark investigative closings so that they couldn't be opened in the future. Lastly, Thibault said that he, quote, welcomes any investigation, end quote, into allegations against him. Well, Mr. Tim Thibault, come on in. Sit for a transcribed interview with me and my colleagues. I yield the floor.